Welcome CSC 103 class to our apple and pear exercise in Blender and we're going to put it in a, in a little bit of a scene. Here's an example and also just so you see where this is, there's an example under documents and resources. There's just a ping file that you could click on and here it is and you can see it's just a pear and an apple and there's basically two planes that are set up with tile textures on them and then there's kind of like a floor texture. It, could be a countertop, it could be a floor, but it adds a lot of nice color. We have a lot of primary colors here. We have blue and off-white and red and kind of yellowish green. So we have a lot of nice colors here. And we even put two lights in the in our scene, two lamps. There was one over here originally. We put another one on the left side to kind of brighten it up a little bit. You can see the, the specular highlight on the pair there. So there's two lights in here to kind of brighten it up so the shadows aren't so dark. So that's what we're going to work towards doing. And we're going to make a pair first. Then we're going to make an apple, and then we'll focus on the background. And in each step is fairly easy, so we'll we'll try to break it down in a couple steps. But we'll start with the pair. Now, there's many ways to do this. I've already done it three different ways, and I'll try to stick to the easiest way. So I'll start to, with the pair and try to work from a sphere. So that's what I'm going to do in Blender. So I'm going to launch Blender, and it's version 2.79. I'll click on that. I don't want that. I'm just going to go New. I must have hit a new, I must have hit a open file. So I'll hit new and I'll reload the startup file. And when I have my default cube here, I'm just gonna right click on it and hit X and hit delete. And remember, you should be using a mouse. You, you're gonna have a hard time if you try to use a trackpad on a laptop. So you should be, should plug in a mouse so you could use the middle scroll wheel. Remember the middle scroll wheel allows you to do this when you hold down on it. And when you shift, hold down on your middle scroll wheel, it allows you to kind of pan your scene a little bit like that. And then you could also zoom in and out with your scroll wheel. And then you're also going to be using your right and left mouse buttons for selecting things and for ending operations. So what I'm going to do first, while I have my perspective scene here, I'm in perspective. And you know our, our lines go to vanishing points. That's the difference between orthogonal view. I'll go to Add. And I'll just add a UV sphere. And there it is. I'll hit my S key and just scale it up a little bit with this little chain here. And then I'm going to go to my view, and I'm going to go in front view. Just view it from the front. I don't have to move it up yet. I'll zoom in by rolling on my scroll bar or my uh, scroll wheel a little bit. And then also it says front. Now this is perspective view. And I really want to be in ortho view. So I can also, while I'm in front, you can see how you see some depth to the grid here. I'm going to go to view and also just change it to ortho. So it should say front ortho. That's what you want for doing this. And we're in object mode. We're focusing on just the object, but now we're going to go into edit mode so we can kind of alter this sphere to look more like a pear. So we're going to go into edit mode, and now we see all the edges, the faces, the vertexes. Uh, these three icons here represent the faces, the edges, and the vertices, or vertex. I don't know if vertices is the, the plural, but either way, the ver vertexes are where they meet, the lines are the lines, and the whole faces are the blocks that kind of make this up. So, and you can hit your A key to select all or deselect. So now I select all with my A and it'll toggle back and forth. So that'll be important to deselecting. Not as much selecting, but deselecting. And we're also gonna use something called a box tool by hitting the B key to select things. Now, before we select anything, very important, we're gonna go down here and this says limit selection to visible. And that's on right now. And that means when you select something, it only selects the visible ones. Well, we want to select through all the ones right through to the other side. So we're going to turn this off. So it'll be up now in the gray position or the lighter position. This is on. We don't want it on. We want it like that. Very important that we do that or you're only going to have like half of a pair. Also going to do this. This is a little tricky, but I'll throw this on and we could just hit enable and that light will be blue and you'll, you'll see what happens when we do that. that that's called enable proportional editing. And what it does is increases or decreases the influence when you do some operations. And you could kind of roll on your scroll wheel to do that. And you'll see what I mean uh, when we do some of that. So the first thing we're going to do is do a pair. Now we could start this anyway. There's, there's no one way to do it. I'm going to use make sure I go A, A again so everything is deselected. And then I'm going to hit my B key. And I'm just going to highlight the, the kind of the top of this object here. I'm not sure if this is all the ones I want, but I'll start there. And what I'll do is, um, normally you could grab onto this, and you could do that. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Normally you could grab this and move this up, and that's kind of what we're going to do. But you see that circle there? 
that's the influence, what we're going to do is instead of dragging it up, if you hit the G key, you could increase or decrease the influence as you move it up. So you just move your mouse up. And if you increase the influence, you can see it affects everything. And if you decrease it, it only affects the things you have selected. So that, that will help a little bit. So we, we want it, you know, kind of, kind of in, affecting a lot of it. There's less influence. There's more influence. The bigger it is, the more influence of the rest of the shape. So I don't need a whole lot, but may, maybe about that much. And I'll just move it up. And I'm, now I'm going to left click. That'll kind of end what I'm doing right now because I'm moving it or using the G key to grab. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my S key and I'm going to kind of bring it in. And you can also affect the influence when you scale. You can see it's now affecting everything or just the top. Now I kind of want to get it in the middle there and I want to get it sort of like that. It's not going to be a perfect pear shape just yet. But once you get it to about there, I'm going to left click and that kind of okays it. Now, because I have things selected up here, I want to hit A to deselect. Now I'm going to select this part. I'm going to hit my B that makes the box select and go right through these vertexes there. And I'm going to hit my S key again. And I'm going to go in. And you can see my, my circle going around there is very large. So I'm going to make that smaller with my scroll wheel so it doesn't affect everything so much. And I'm just going to taper this in a little bit. And I'll hit A to deselect. And again, if you want to make your pair a little longer, hit the B and highlight all this and you could even move it up a little bit and you know you could go back and tweak this as much as you want you could tweak different parts of it you can even subdivide it and add another kind of uh, area in here you could subdivide it so you could have another line if you'd want to but I'll, I'll avoid doing that right now but again A and then I'll do B to highlight this again and again scale I'm just kind of squeezing it in now you don't want it that much and if there's more influence, it'll affect everything a little bit more. And that's about okay right now. It's not the perfect pair. You could try different ways and try different things with it. Uh, but I'm going to stay with that for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pull in the top and pull in the bottom to give it kind of like that kind of stem area. So I'm going to, and if you want to squash it down, you could do A and highlight everything. And then make sure you use the little scale tool down here with the block on it. And you can kind of squash it down a little bit. And I'll hit A. And now I'm just going to hit my scroll wheel and kind of look at the top. And I'll zoom in a little bit and make sure it's still on selecting vertexes. And I'm going to right click right there. And what I'll do, I'll put it on my, put it back to the arrow. And I'll move, scroll it this way a little bit. I might have to hold shift and, and pan a little bit. Now what I'll do is I'm going to hit the G key. Because since I'm using proportional editing, it's better to use the G key than to grab these arrows because then you, you almost have to move your mouse and roll the scroll wheel at the same time. So I'm going to hit G and look at that and see what it's doing. It's pulling everything in. So I'm going to reduce my, I'm going to reduce that so I could just pull in the center. I'm reducing my influence and just pulling in the center. So it's only if it, the, the smaller you go, it just affects one point. The bigger you go, it affects more things around it. So I'm just going to kind of bring that in and just kind of pull it down right now just to make a little indention in there in the top of my pair. And I'll go back and I think Actually, I'm going to do A and I'll do B again. I think I'll pull out this up just a little bit again. I think I'll scale that out just a little bit. And I'll left click to OK it. And then I'll zoom out. So that, that's OK. And I'll do the bottom. So I'll just kind of look at the bottom here. I'll right click. And again, I'll use my G key. And just kind of go in a little bit. I could increase the influence a little and just kind of pull it in and left click when I'm done. And that's it. That's all I have to do with my pair. Assuming you got it looking okay. Now, this is edit mode. So once you're done editing in this mode, let me hit A to deselect everything. Then I'm going to go back to object mode. And it still looks a little flattish. You can use the smooth here to kind of smooth it out. And that looks okay. That's fine to start. This doesn't have to be perfect. And while it's selected, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to put on a material and then a texture. Now one thing, let me make sure I, I've done this. I'm going to go back here and go to my coursework and find the exercise that we're working on. This one happens to be 26. I think 25 and 26 have the same folder that you could download. But I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to find a folder called 3D Textures. And I'll right click and I'll do Save Link As. And I'm going to save it to my desktop because it'll just be easier to get to for now. 
And on a, if you're on a Mac, you can just double click to unzip it or decompress it. On Windows, you might have to extract it and go through that process of extracting a zip file. But now that I have that on my desktop, let me just make sure it's there. Desktop, 3D textures, there it is. There's my zip and that. So I could even, if I was on, on a Mac, I could just get rid of the zip and keep the original folder. And I'm gonna go back to Blender. And again, two-step process. I'm gonna go to this one first. Now this one is materials. I'll click on that and all that you have to do is just hit new and just go to where it says diffuse and just give it a color. I'll just give it any color. You could have even left it white, but I'll make it a little more pear colored. And then after you do that, nothing else to do here. Go to your texture, which is like this checkerboard and also hit new and then scroll down and look for the open button. Don't do anything else, but look for the open button. You could change this name to pear skin if you want to, but if you don't, that's okay. I'll hit open and I'll go to desktop because that's where I put my textures and I'll find pear skin. Then I have to go over here to open image and there's my pear skin, there's the material. And what you want to do, just two, two things, a couple things here, uh, change under mapping. If you scroll down, there's image, image sampling, image mapping, and then mapping. Change generate it or change UV to generate it and change projection to sphere. And that should help the way it maps onto the shape a little better. Another little thing you could do is if you go down to geometry under influence, that puts kind of a texture on it from that, uh, from that image. And if you go negative, if you, scroll, if you kind of scroll and go negative just a little bit, it'll put kind of negative bumps. If it's positive, it puts kind of holes in it. But if you go negative, it puts kind of bumps that come out, real subtle bumps. And I'm gonna render it just to see and you can see the little bumps if I zoom in here. Those are the little bumps on there, and that kind of looks more like a pear. It's not going to be perfectly smooth. And that's about all I want for right now. So that's a pretty good looking pear. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an apple. So let me take a break here, and then I'll do the apple for part two. And then for part three, we'll put the uh, background pieces in there.